Hello and welcome to LawWiser. Today we are starting with a new series on innovation and disruption in legal tech. We are here for the first session, which is on the legal tech space in Nepal. And for this, we have with us Kailash Pandey, who has been recognized as 30 people to watch in business and law in Asia by Asia Law Portal of, in 2020. Welcome on board, Kailash. Uh, thank you for taking time for us. Uh, you know, in brief, if you could explain to us uh, how the uh, law firms in Nepal are adapting uh, to the legal tech. Yeah, so as we all know, right, so law, law industry itself is known to be very slow in terms of adopting technology. And, you know, Nepal is not any different than that. I think, you know, India is far more advanced in terms of adopting legal technology as, as you know, given the work experience that I have in India also, right? So over here, we do use uh, some technologies. So if we have to, you know, definitely talk about legal adoption of legal technology, I think we need to first uh, clarify what a legal technology signifies, right? So basically speaking, in general parlance, we take any technology or software that aids, uh, you know, legal profession with delivering legal services as legal technology. So in, 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 in strictest sense, we do use, you know, the law firms in India, in Nepal, do use uh, certain technologies to assist them, but not in a very massive way, right? So even in Nepal, we need to speak from both perspective, uh, from both perspective of areas of uh, legal practice, that is one is litigation, the court practice, and another is uh, corporate law practice. So if you talk about corporate law practice, uh, a lot of law firms in Nepal, you know, the older ones, the top ones have been using uh, the legal technology in some way or another, right? Whether it be attendance management, lead generation, or, you know, even to uh, prepare their documentation or keep records of, you know, their cl client data and everything. So, but not in such a prevalent way that, you know, we would, we would uh, call ourselves as early adopters or, you know, significant adopters of legal technology. If you talk about litigation side, so that side is, you know, even, uh, I don't think, you know, we have been using legal technology so much because if you see uh, the courts are still on in, in the process of adopting legal technology. So it's, it's more like, you know, the pandemic situation right now has forced us to move into uh, adopting technology more. So that might be, you know, one of the silver linings of uh, these current situations. So when I say uh, law firms, uh, if I say the corporate law firms, we have been, we have started using it, right? So even in, in case of, my, in case of uh, the law firm that I manage, we have been using customer relation management softwares. You know, there are different uh, softwares to deliver work to our clients. And even we have been working on automating the document templates so that, you know, there is no multi, uh, multiplication of efforts to get the same work done. So these are some of the areas uh, where corporate law firms in Nepal have been using technology. On the other side, uh, if we talk about uh, litigation practice, so in litigation, the courts have had adopted, you know, having online hearing, uh, you know, the schedule been uh, published or cause list been practiced for long, but it's only, the, uh, only for the purpose of viewing it, right? So there is no further action to that. So it doesn't add significant value to the lawyers other than, you know, just seeing it on the, on, on the website of the court that, you know, when your case is listed, uh, whether it's listed or not and other matters. So that's also some of the areas, you know, one very important area where I think, you know, the technology needs to uh, fill the gap in terms of uh, delivering legal services. So to summarize, we are still at a very nascent stage so there is so much of opportunities. I see opportunities everywhere where, you know, we can introduce legal technology and add significant value to whether it be, you know, adding value to our clients or promoting access to justice. True. So, you know, uh, Kailash, what are the challenges that are faced in marketing and adaptation of this legal tech in Nepal? To talk about, you know, adoption of uh, legal technology, there are three crucial things that I think, you know, are play a very important role. So the first thing is people. The second thing is process. And third, you know, the most important thing is technology. So these three things play a very crucial role in implementing or even, you know, marketing legal technology products in Nepal. So if we, if we talk about uh, the three aspects, so if, if I say about people, so we need to work uh, a lot on that area because the, whether, you know, the kind of education system we come through and the kind of, you know, the mentorship that we have do not support the adoption of, you know, 
very advanced uh, stage of legal technology, right? Even even to run a basic processing word processing software, you may have to train your associate or your trainee from the very basic level, right? So these this is the stage in if I talk about people. So if uh, the education system can incorporate, you know, usage of more technology, making our graduates more tech savvy. I think that would certainly help, right? So other aspect is process. So process is always going to be very, you know, tedious for lawyers to understand, right? Because, you know, the problem with legal tech products that are available currently are, you know, these products are developed by technical experts you know, who are, know, who know about the technology, but know very little about the domain, right? So we cannot ask, and we, you know, we cannot go and ask for a customized product uh, right away because it, it, it costs a lot, right? So if we are using a product that's available there, it's very important that we understand the process, you know, what goes through uh, using the product or what is the expected outcome? Because a lot of time, even with my team, what I've been struggling is, you know, we have been using a workflow management system, right? So with it, the problem I faced was uh, the team is not able to, you know, understand how things work at the beginning. So it might take longer than expected, right? So for a technology team or for a technical uh, people, it might sound very easy, but for a, from a lawyer's perspective, you know, using the system itself might be challenging. So the process side should be more, uh, you know, uh, what would, uh, should be more convenient easy to use and it should have a definite manual as to you know how it can be used and third thing you know it's it's obviously the technology so as i said the legal tech market or the adoption is at an early stage we cannot think about you know adopting blockchain machine learning and stuff like that you know we are at a very basic level so we may start with you know something like you know customer relation management software workflow management software and things like that and gradually move on so the, you know, as I said, so this perfectly sums uh, the challenge that we face when we bring a specific legal tech product in and introduce it to the Nepali market is we need to make, you know, people learn about it first. So that takes time, you know, it, it takes time and it costs money. Another thing is, you know, the uh, process, you know, the process sometimes looks complicated for a legal or a lawyer, right? Even though they are the domain expert in the theory of law, but since they do not uh, understand the technology firsthand, it might be challenging and definitely the you know level of technology that has been deployed so these are the three areas and three challenges that currently we face while marketing and adapting legal technology in nepal so a lot of times people get confused between legal tech and knowledge sharing so if you could differentiate uh, and you know explain to our audience uh, the difference between right. legal tech and the knowledge sharing that would also make it easier for them to understand uh, this whole topic Generally, if I were to talk in the layman language, you know, so what legal tech should do or, you know, should be able to do for a law firm or a law or a legal professional is, you know, it should help, you know, deliver your legal services better, right? So that's one, that's one of the important criteria. So it should have direct relationship with delivery of legal services, right? So it can improve your process, it can automate your process, or it can manage your, you know, customer relation, whether whatever it might be, you know, they should be there. On the other hand, knowledge sharing do contribute to your practice, but in a very indirect way, right? So it, it does not have direct contribution. So when I say direct contribution in terms of, you know, adding value to the client's purpose. So it, it does add value, but in an indirect way. So, you know, I think, you know, it would be very relevant to discuss this right now because a lot of, lot of you know, people have started these knowledge sharing platforms lately, right? And they often confuse this with, you know, the legal tech, right? But these are not the products that, you know, the legal industry would actually need uh, or, you know, cannot uh, move ahead without, without those products. It's, it's, I'm not saying that they are not important. They are very important, right? Because these are the ones that actually, you know, help us grow. But in terms of your ourselves, right? So in terms of adding value to a lawyer, these knowledge sharing uh, platforms definitely help. But on the other way, we cannot confuse them with legal tech products because these are entirely different products that helps a lawyer with his practice. So, as I said, you know, it might sound very, you know, it, there is a, there might be a very thin line when we go and actually see, you know, what, what is the difference about, right? So it can be knowledge sharing can be a part of the legal tech, uh, you know, the mechanism or the system, but it might, it cannot stand alone as a legal tech product, right? So that's, that's how we can uh, differentiate between a, 
legal trick product and knowledge sharing products because as you see a lot of law firms have started webinars right not only law firms but even you know the uh, the uh, groups or college groups even colleges have started in you know using that so that might be one area where you know that might be termed as knowledge sharing but it doesn't actually you know contribute to our uh, delay delivery of services or it, it, it does not uh, you know bring a lot of changes to the uh, manner we provide our services so legal tech should be some way that's that might be my perspective right so and i may be wrong but uh, what i feel is you know if we say legal tech it should be adding value to the service delivery side and not the uh, knowledge creation side so that's the way i would like to differentiate the two areas Right. So how do you see it growing uh, in the next few years, you know, uh, where do you see it, it's going to be heading towards? I would have two answers for that. So if you were asking this in 2019, you know, I would be somehow pessimistic about it, right? Because we were trying to push a legal tech product in the market and then the experience that we had was not so warm or welcoming, right? So it was like, you know, why would you even need this? Because the system has been working fine. So why would we need a technology to just to, you know, have an interface between the lawyers and the service seekers or something like that. But when I, when we reach this point of time in 2020, and especially due to the current pandemic situation, which, you know, there is no face-to-face -face interaction has been, you know, diminished. And then we are speaking over Zoom. What I see is, you know, the adoption is going to be massive because the, those very clients that would want me to, you know, come to their place or they would want to visit my office are more comfortable you know using zoom so that itself means you know the uh, customers or the clients are very open to using technology so in in those terms even lawyers are now more moving to you know moving towards adopting newer technologies so that you know the delivery of services is more efficient cost effective uh, systematic and then you know services can be delivered on time so if we are able to you know pr push any product that can address these four issues currently that's in the market i think i wouldn't say it would even take five years uh, for us to you know have a massive adoption maybe in a year or two we can see that you know we having a massive adoption going on so again when i talk about adoption it we have to look at from both perspective that's the corporate law firms perspective and the litigating lawyers perspective so the one thing we are trying to do is, you know, developing separate products for the, you know, uh, two areas of law. So we are developing products for the litigating lawyers that can help, you know, uh, help them with their practice management. And on, on the other side, we are also working on a product that can, you know, automate and then, you know, remove a lot of redundancies in the practices of corporate law firms. So I guess, you know, I'm very optimistic in, in those terms. And in five years, I think we can grow, uh, we can grow and be on a, you know, stage that India is today. Maybe, maybe, you know, it's, it's relatively a small market, but I see the adoption taking place widely. 